Hey, hey, I'm here. Sorry about that. All right. <clears throat> so thanks, thanks for showing up again, y'all. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ignore Discord while we're while recording, and so I'm actually paying attention a little bit to the stream chat. So um, here we go. So uh, there's actually um, there's actually a Discord. I've been I've been chatting in the Discord after hours, and so um, that's been going pretty good. Good discussions going on there. Uh, I pop in for sure. <coughs> so um, yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go over a lot of stuff tonight. Um, so tonight I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do some more event stuff. Because I just want to show everybody, I'm going to show, uh, I'm going to show the attacker side of things, and uh, I'm going to show how attacks work, and then I'm going to uh, show you how, um, how, I'm going to just show you how this stuff all works. I, sometimes I can just show you better than I can tell you. So I'm logging in. So I tell you what, this is this is actually this is actually kind of crazy because. We got way more people than I anticipated in here. Uh, I was expecting like 50 people at the most. So now, <laughs> I mean, we got like 500 people uh, on, on Discord. And uh, I'm not sure how many people are on here. So um, so, so first things first, about the, about the homework. The homework is for you. It's not for me. And I will be checking on the home, homework eventually. But don't worry about it for now. I'm trying to come up with a good way to do it. So, <coughs> so this is funny because my dog, uh, the family's here, so you might hear stuff in the background. My dogs are here, but we're just we're just gonna roll with it. I'm not gonna. I'm trying to be good. Uh, so, so I got, I got three rescues. You'll see the rescues from time to time. Um, so we have, it's okay, it's okay, babe, I'm good. So we got three rescues, um, and they're, they're all over the place. So, um, so let, let me, let me get down, let me get down to this. So one of the things that, that I want to do here is I want to, we went over TCP IP and things like that last time. So let, let me get, I'm going to get that fired up real quick. <clears throat> Just do a quick review of what we we covered last time. Damn that that crash start. All right, so what we went over last time, uh, we still don't the quarantine the quarantine sec uh, Twitter account it still looked like it's down last time I checked. I checked today. Uh, we do have a Discord channel. I'll, I'll be I'll, I'm in the Discord channel, uh, but I'm gonna totally ignore it while I'm doing this. I was kind of distracted last time. Uh, so we're going to try to do this in like 20 minute increments or on a half hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to like 6.30. I'm going to let everybody take a five minute break and then I'm going to come back. Um, wow, so is this the only thing that was covered? Let me, let me see here. Wow, this is crazy. Uh, I, I had a lot more stuff typed in here, but but uh, that's, this is what it is. The only thing I want y'all to do is to uh, pay it forward. That's the whole, that's the tuition of this. Um, and um, basically, uh, we, we, we talked about downloading the, the Network Plus objectives. Um, and I'm going to go to my files here. So in Network Plus, what the uh, homework assignment was, and like I said, the homework's for you, not for me. So don't worry about submitting that right now. Uh, after this weekend, I plan on being getting this far more organized. This is way bigger, like I said, than I planned. But I'm happy that everybody's here, and I'm good. I think I can handle it, and uh, the community is going to do it. All right, so uh, what we have here, we, we said the homework last last week, I mean last uh, Tuesday, was to do uh, to be able to write like two sentences about each one of these terms. These are protocols and ports. And one dot two. We so today, what we're gonna what we're gonna we're gonna actually talk a little bit about this right here. Uh, so one dot three, 
this is gonna be this is gonna be your next assignment. Um, and let me let's do one dot four. So the reason why I want you to go through here and take notes and uh, study is so eventually what you what you're gonna be able to do is this is gonna be somewhat of a study guide for you. I want you to make flashcards uh, as well at some point. And so those those flashcards are going to be terms. What I want to do is I want to equip everybody in here to do way more than that. Now, so I don't know. Some of you might not know this, but back in the day, I used to teach at this thing called uh, the Defense Cybercrime Center. It's DC three, and DC three. What they do is they 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 do uh, forensic investigations for the military. And so when I was there, uh, I. I, I train people on uh, on doing digital forensics, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna show you some of the techniques that I taught law enforcement. I taught people. I taught some pretty awesome people. I, I taught people that that have did famous investigations that you've heard of. So uh, the one thing that I the one thing that I did is I'm gonna bring up so. Back in the day, there was this thing called HoneyNet Project. And the HoneyNet Project, uh, I mean, I think it still exists, but one of the things that they had was they had these things they call as uh, scan, of, scan of the months. Uh, and so what that, what that had here, and I'm going uh, to extract this. They should give pretty good, um, they, they did these things. And uh, they did these these captures. They set up honeypots, and this is one of one of the logs. And these what they did with these honey honeypots, and what was dope about it is that um, you saw exactly how a hacker behaved. So sorry, everybody. I lost the notes from last from last class because <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't save the thing, uh, I didn't I didn't save my slides. But I'm pretty sure some people took good notes. Uh, never, never, don't worry. Uh, we're going to be okay. All right. So, and also what I did, and y'all don't have to worry about this yet, but I do eventually want everybody to get, I've been thinking really hard and I just actually, while I was, I was thinking really hard, I was just mowing my lawn and I was just making some brisket. And, uh, what I really want to do is, uh, yeah, that's right. We still had a video. Right, we can go back and we can recreate those slots. God dang it. We got a lot of smart people in here. <laughs> so, so the, if there's two things I want y'all to take away, and the ultimate goal is everybody in here is going to be a really good, uh, <laughs> a really good, uh, security analyst. I want everybody in here to be able to be a security analyst. I want y'all to be able to go through and, uh, Go to any job and be able to know two things. I think you should know Linux pretty well, um, and um, I think you should know um, you should know you should also know. I think you should know protocol analysis. So the two big things that I'm gonna I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you how to do Wireshark really well. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to use um, I'm gonna show you how to do. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to do in uh, like a, a, a pen test kind of thing. I'm gonna walk through and I'm gonna show you how to do a pen test. Um, so and this is gonna be pretty dope. And and some people here may have done some of these different things, uh, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure that no matter what your experience is, you're gonna definitely learn uh, from some of the things we're doing. So I think that a couple of things here. It's really important. Um, I've actually been doing a lot of reflection. I'm like, what's, without a doubt, the easiest route to get in cybersecurity is to be a security analyst. And so I think that I want to definitely tailor the, the, this course and all the stuff that I teach you. I want to teach you how to be, to get into the game. Because it seems like a lot of people here uh, are trying to break into the field. And, and that's kind of like, you're trying to break into the field or you're trying to advance your career. So, uh, 
what I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you today, and something that we're going to focus on a lot is we're going to focus on protocol analysis. Because what, what happens is with protocol analysis, you're going to understand this stuff inside out. Uh, and I mean this stuff as in cybersecurity. We're going to continue to go over the objectives for the other certifications, but by the time you see this, um, by the time you get done with this, you're going to be uh, you're going to be good to go as far as protocol analysis. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how SIM works, and we're going to we're going to show talk about that. Um, and when you start seeing when you start looking at these logs, what it's going to do for you is it's going to show you how to um, how all these tools and stuff work. You're going to be able to see how intrusion detection system works. Uh, you're going to see how firewall works uh, because I'm going to go through all these different things with, with you all. Um, and it's going to be pretty, pretty dope. Uh, so I'm going to cover that. You're going to understand inner networking super well. Uh, you're going to know how to break up. You're going to know how to do your own packet captures. Uh, it's just going to be dope. It's just, I'm, I'm telling you, you're going to be super prepared to, to get a job. That's, that's the whole, that's the whole deal. So, um, and if you do have a job, I'm, I'm going to give you some skills that you can use at your current job. So, uh, that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. So hopefully, hopefully this works out pretty well for you. So, uh, we talked a little bit about the OSI model, uh, last time. And, and the OSI model is documented pretty well here. Uh, in, the, in these in these different things, so here it talks about ports, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start I'm going to open up a packet capture, and in that packet capture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to yeah you can see the whole screen in that packet capture. What I'm going to continue to do is reference back to this to show you why it's relevant, because sometimes when when somebody teaches you something, right. Uh, when they teach you, sometimes they don't teach you the practical application. So I, I want to show you why it's important because then I think it makes learning way, way more, uh, it makes it stick better if you know why you're learning this stuff. So the best way to do it is show you, I'm going to show you an intrusion. I'm going to show you somebody actually hacking a box and I'm going to show you how an attacker, how an attacker works. And then what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to so many things and you're going to have this in your head. And then um, what what I what I what I think you're going to do there is um, is be able to uh, be able to really, really drill down and, and crush it. All right. So the first thing I'm going to, I'm going to talk about here is. Um, and let me let me I'm going to pause real quick. So how's everybody doing? Uh, is, is the stream okay for y'all? I'm pausing for a second. All right, cool. So yeah, all the uh, sweet. So all right, cool. So let's 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 get going. So what's gonna happen is everything I'm doing is recorded, and it's gonna be on YouTube as well. We're gonna set up a YouTube channel. So next Tuesday, so the next time we do a class next Tuesday, we should have a lot of things in place. And I have somewhat of a surprise for y'all too. Um, all right, cool. Let's, let's do this. So we talked about the OSI model. Um, so when I go through the package chapters, I'm going to talk about the OSI model too. And how different things relate to the different thing, th these pieces. And I'm going to talk about the different protocols. So you're going to see an, a, ha a hacker go use these these protocols right this is going to be so dope so um now so basically what i did and we're going to make the we're going to give you all links to these as well because at the end of this you should be able to go to this just like me i want y'all to be better than me when i finish this so this is these logs are i believe they're both pcap files but let's check it out so I'm, so basically, there's this program called Wireshark. This is a free tool, and, and anybody can install it. Hopefully, what we hopefully what we'll do with Wireshark is uh, um, hopefully with Wireshark, and and also uh, what's cool about this is uh, <coughs> if y'all um, 
if you all um, know the answers to the questions, because a lot of people keep on helping each other out and, uh, and, and, answer, and answer a lot of the questions because some people are new. So what I'm going to do here is, what, what's cool with Wireshark is you can capture packets. So I can capture packets. So if you see, and if you've ever seen a hacker movie, if you don't notice before, so in some hacker movies you see people capturing packets and, and looking what people's doing on the internet. So that's a that's a that's a sniffer, and Wireshark is a is a sniffer, and Wireshark's awesome because it's free, and anybody can install this, right? And this is dope. So you can capture traffic. That means if you're at Starbucks or something, you can actually capture all the traffic uh, that that you can see, and if you're in a promiscuous mode. So on another thing you can do is you can actually open up pack open up packet captures. Now I'm 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 keeping my fingers crossed here because I did increase the, the RAM on my machine, and so these pack capture I think they might be a good size. So I'm gonna down I'm gonna say day one log, and fantastic. So that opened up. What's cool about this is um uh, in here you can see the different requests that happen on the network. So what, how this works, you know, I'm going to kind of like, I'm going to draw crude, well, and I mean crude as in, <laughs> sometimes you got to watch the language, right? I'm going to draw a quick diagram on how this all works. And I'll do it in here. template all right so I'm gonna draw how, th how this works so um, let's let's just draw a couple of boxes so this is box number one and I'm gonna show you how, how a sniffer kind of works whoops So I should have two boxes and how you can kind of visualize, how you can kind of in your head think about it is that it, how, how a sniffer works, a sniffer works like this is, say if this is your machine right here, this is a, say, this is, this is Marcus and you know, this is my machine, right? And I'm going to, and, and I'm going out to the internet. So say if I was going to Google, you can actually, how a sniffer works is a sniffer can be, can be anywhere in between this path. Uh, how Wireshark works is it actually, it's like a sniffer on your, your ethernet, your local, your local network sniffer. So this is, that's how Wireshark works. So this is Wireshark and it's capturing all the traffic on my machine. Now, uh, you can put Wireshark, if you're on Wi-Fi, sometimes, it depends on how Wi-Fi is configured, you can see other people traffic uh, with something like Wireshark too. Uh, there's tools called, there's other things like TCP dump, there's all kind of different sniffer type things, but Wireshark's free and available. So anything I teach you, I always tell people, use your superpowers for good. Use your superpowers for good. Right? So ITF is free at the moment. Wow, cool. What's ITF? Is that a cert? I ITF plus? So what's important about this is that, so how HoneyNet works is they have what this thing called a honeypot. And what they do is they have, a, this is a bad guy on the internet. And they're using a sniffer. The sniffer can be all kind of different. So it's, a sniffer is Wireshark, but a honeypot is a machine that's intentionally 
left vulnerable to attacks. Right? So it's intentionally left vulnerable for attacks. Now what they do is the Honey Net Project, what they did is they, they put honeypots all over the internet. Uh, some of the some, the some of the things they put up were logs, like they were text logs, and in this case, the one I'm going to show you is a, is a binary capture. So we call it we call it binary because it's like it, it's uh it's everything that went across the wire pretty much. All right, so everybody everybody got that? Yeah. So there's a lot of different ways that. To put a sniffer in line, you can put it on a switch, all that different different things. But the the whole point about a sniffer is that you're capturing all the traffic. So what we're about to look at is we're about to look at a bad person. I think that this was, probably was an Italian hacker. An Italian hacker was was uh, connected I and mean, was was attacking this box and put put on all kind of stuff. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how you do that. So, uh, what I'm going to do is encourage everybody to download Wireshark eventually. Do not worry about this right now. Don't try to follow along with me. I'm going to be super fast and going through this stuff. So, don't worry if you can't follow me. The goal is, at the end of this, you're going to be a beast and you're going to be able to do this. I want you to be so good you can explain it and teach other people. All right. So let's go back to the wire, wire, wire capture. The first thing I want y'all to pay attention to is check this out, frames. We talked about frames on the wire. See that it says this many bits, right? Now, I, I said something, I think that, uh, that a frame can be up to, I think 1500 bits or something like that. I could be wrong or something, but, but basically somebody asked about like, what, what, how big is a frame? Well, you don't have to worry about the frame and all that stuff because the computer, your NIC, your Wi-Fi connection, whatever that may be, uh, it's going to actually just break up, break the stuff up. Is it? I think it's 1500 bytes. I'm going to get the right number for that. But a frame can be variable size. This frame is a frame that was on the actual wire. So if this was actually Ethernet, it would have been electronic signals. All right, cool. So somebody did say, and is that that bytes, fifteen hundred bytes, right? Network, network ninja. I thought they some said something else. I thought they said network negro for a second, but not the no, negro word. Keep it, keep it, keep it classy. All right, so. I'm going to say some crazy stuff, so bear with me. Is it, can I increase the font size? Let's see, let's see, zoom. Zoom in. How do I do that? Yeah, uh, let me, let me, uh, let me try to zoom in a couple times. All right, control plus plus. Let me see if I can do it a couple times. Boom, 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 boom. All right, super big now. That's way bigger than it was. It's probably twice twice the size it was. All right, so this is the frame. It says it's Ethernet. We'll talk more about Ethernet when we get we're gonna get into it in a little bit. There are some cool stuff on here. First thing being the frame. This one right here. Check this out. This says destination. This is where I'm. This right here it says Oracle D1. So, basically. These are the MAC addresses. Remember I tell y'all, and I heard, I see a lot of y'all calling me Butch now. <laughs> the MAC address is, it's a burnt-in address. A lot of people call it the burnt-in address. That address is locally significant, and that's how I communicate with my router. <clears throat> so, I'm when I send something out to my Wi-Fi on my computer now, so when I'm communicating through this Twitch stream, my local machine is going to be the source in that case it's going to send it to the wi-fi router and that's going to be the destination so locally if your machines are on the same local area network they're always going to talk with this if they're in the same subnet or network 
So pretty much all the machines on your on your network are talking with these burnt in addresses and they're sending packets straight to each other. Somebody says it's like a, a social security number. That's a good that's a good analogy. Now, also it says we're using IP version 4. So now you, you can look at this and you can see everything is <laughs> like so in depth on the OSI model. Now I'm really, really going to be excited when I see Session Layer because I think I told y'all, I think Session Layer is a myth, right? Now, right here, this is IP, this is Internet Protocol, it's a source and destination. Remember, if there ever been a time back in the day where you could not get to the inter Internet, right? It's because you might may have didn't have an IP address, but in this case, we're walking through this. So this machine right here is the source. That means it's my local machine, right? And the destination, this is different than that destination prop in, in most cases. This right here, <clears throat> if I need to get off my local network, I need to put in, I need to have a default route. Dang it, can I do this? View, zoom in. I got it. So if y'all wondering why I'm, why I'm tripping sometimes, because I got, I got a Mac keyboard and sometimes it just don't, it doesn't work the way I expect it to. I'm, you know, I got a, I got a Mac, so. So my virtual machine, I'm running VMware Fusion, right? And so VMware Fusion, and I have a Mac keyboard. So my Mac keyboard sometimes is stupid when it, on Ubuntu. All right. So on my local machine, this is a virtual machine. But as I was saying, everything breaks back down to what to to what we're talking about here, because I'm going to have is my default right in here? God dang. Y'all see it in here? So this is my broadcast address. Let me see something here. I'm kind of confused for a second here. And that's that. I thought my, my default route should show up there. All right. It's not showing up there, but on Windows, typically, I think it does show up. What command, uh, any, oh, is it route? Does it just show me? Somebody said route. Ah, perfect. Um, basically, the default is not showing me the actual IP address. I'll figure that out in a second. It's, it's slipping me. Uh, is it IP route on, on Linux? So, all right, default via this. So, let, let's do the other command. See, that's what I'm saying. Like when you hop from machine to machine, don't be afraid to ask for help. Thanks, thanks for everybody here. Uh, sh the, 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 give me the help. Because like you're, you're hopping from machine to machine to machine and everything's a little bit different. So right here, IP route, it showed me this is my default route. That means just like if I need to, if I need to deliver information to another network, I have to go to the I would have to go to the post office, right? So if I need to send something to Google, if I do a, search, a Google search, I need to send it to my default router. And your default router on your local network, most of the time, is going to be your Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause for a second. Uh, and we're going to, we're going to, I'm walking through this, so I want to make sure that is is totally totally relevant okay and and so hopefully you're you're enjoying this uh and hopefully you're going to be able to get this i'm going to take a five minute break go do it to go what you need to go new uh go do what you need to do real quick and i'll be back five minutes sharp so that means i'll be back at 40 after the hour
Hey everybody, I'm going to start up in a second. Yeah, somebody said, uh, yeah, so what I'm teaching you right now is like super crucial. I'm trying to teach y'all technical skills. And if you know everything that I'm talking about here and you can visualize it and know it in practical application, it's going to be super easy to read. It's going to be more and more easy to understand. So uh, I got a Yeti podcaster. Somebody asked. That's how it looks. So it has an arm. All right. So as we see here, what I'm trying to show y'all is I'm 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 not trying to like some people are gonna read y'all freaking slides and stuff like that. What I'm trying to show y'all is I'm trying to show you the practical application of the terms. Right? And and even better than that, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to um you're gonna have this practical knowledge and you're also gonna see how an attacker attacks and you're gonna see how you can actually see that attacker attack. So, what I'm doing here, last week we talked about these network concepts and we talked about these things. The people that were here last week should have reviewed this as well, right? And what I'm going over here is these two subject thing, these two things, <laughs> my dog is going to keep on coming in here all night. This is funny. But, um, on, on 1.2, you're going to see layer 1 through 7, I'm showing you those things in Wireshark. So you're going you're gonna to see this, right? <laughs> He's doing this, this facts. What's funny is my dining room is right here, and, I, and my family's in there having, having, having dinner. So let me, let me close the door real quick. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, here we go. So, and that's what the tie-in is. And so some of y'all, y'all might not get this right now, right? But trust me, y'all stay with me. In eight weeks, you'll be doing this well. And if it takes longer than eight weeks, it's gonna take longer than eight weeks. We got the Discord community up. We 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 crushing this, right? Oh, that brisket is definitely uh, out there. So I actually, I I I partook in some of the brisket already though. So don't don't worry about your boy. I I got some brisket in. So, uh, and I and I want to try to do as much as I can. So these networking concepts are more than concepts. What I'm telling you is if you know these things, all these things, like if you heard of an intrusion detection system or whatever they may be, or a network alert or whatever these things are, once you have this etched in your brain and you know how this stuff works, there ain't nothing nobody can throw in front of you that's going to be super confusing. So this is why it's super important, and I'm drilling down on this. But I'm going to cover one more thing real quick, right? And this is going to be pretty dope. Uh, this is something that, that I kind of... So if you ever played around with Metasploit, and some of y'all have, there's a, there's a Metasploit diagram. There's a Metasploit like little banner that comes up. It has a little tank on it. And it has a little money bag on it. I, I, I actually came up with that. Uh, I came up with that dang banner. Uh, I, I wrote that banner because there's, when it comes to an intrusion, um, let me see. View toolbars slot. I think this is it. Slot plan. Do a new one here. <clears throat> and, and what we're going to call this, and this is super important. 
to an intrusion. An intrusion is a breach or whatever you want to call it, right? So the first thing there is is there is reconnaissance, and I'm just going to spell the recon because I'm from Texas and I can't spell reconnaissance. Um, then there's an attack. Then there's uh, entrenchment. And then there's uh, abuse. <clears throat> now those are the those are the those are the phases, right? So these are the phases of an intrusion. So you can look at any intrusion, and this is what 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 how they end up. <clears throat> so there's reconnaissance. There's reconnaissance tools. We'll talk about that. There's an attack. Is when you're actually doing exploitation. Entrenchment is when you're trying to stay on the system, right? And uh, abuse is when uh, uh, entrenchment is like creating new pack, creating a new account, creating a backdoor, creating a listener. That's entrenchment. Entrenchment means that once you get on the system, you want to maintain a presence on that uh, that thing. So and so definitely persistence. I want to I want to persist, right? Abuse, and some people call this goals, right? So when an attacker uh, wants to attack, they're going to achieve goals. So the actual attack can be a lot of different things. It could be a buffer overflow. This could be phishing. Uh, whatever, right? Multiple things. Recon could be scanning. So there's two kind of recons. One's passive, passive, and one's active. Passive reconnaissance means you're scanning the network, and uh, active means that. Uh, so basically, this is like a if if you this is kind of like a a. This is this is a cycle. Um, this is a continuous uh, cycle, by the way. I wonder if I can I can't get something that looks like that. So, basically, once so basically you're we doing reconnaissance. I'm looking looking on LinkedIn. I'm seeing somebody I want to hack, right? And that's reconnaissance. Uh, s trying to find out the email addresses for executives. That that's reconnaissance. By sending a phishing email, that's the attack piece, right? Then you're gonna persist. That means you're gonna get you're gonna get your dang um, you're gonna get the account and you're gonna stay on there, right? Uh, and then abuse means I wanna I wanna get their domain server. But what's crazy though is once you get in there and entrench, and you start abusing, you're gonna start recon. You're gonna do recon inside the network. And then you're going to attack more boxes. And then you're going to entrench on more boxes. And then you're going to abuse more things. So it's a continuous, continuous, infinite loop uh, on the network. And hopefully that makes sense. All right. So now what I'm going to show you, and I wanted to cover this. Let me save this because I was silly last time. I didn't save it. Save it. Yes. All right. So that's what you have to have in your mind, right? So now what we're looking at here is we're looking at a real live attack. We're going to see an attacker attacking uh, this 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 system. This system has a vulnerability. Um, in a rare raptor, I'm about to go through it right now. So what we're going to do is those those four phases. We should see those four phases in this attack, and it's going to be super practical, and you're going to see it. And the reason why I really love this uh, scenario here in these logs is because it shows you exactly uh, what what's going on. So, uh, let's do it. 
So, um, so another thing to pay attention to is these these ports here. This DNS. Look at that DNS, right? You see that? And then when you look here, remember, here's the frame. This is like the wire right here. This is on the wire. This is the physical frame. This is the bits. This is the layer two. This is the data link layer. Hey, look at that right here. Layer two, the data link layer right there, right? When IP, that's the network layer, right? UDP, that's the transport layer. You feel me? There's no session layer, but by saying port 53, that's addressed to some some program that's actually going to interpret that. Uh, that's an application, and there's a what's cool about this, and this is what's dope. And the more you look into it, I'll tell you exactly what happened. So anytime you type in something to your into your browser, anytime you type in something to your browser. So if I type in Google.com, what's happening in the background when I hit Enter? It's doing a DNS request to look up Google, right? So basically, um, I can I can probably show you better than I can tell you. So let me, dang it, I don't want to mess nothing up here. But let me just close this. I'm going to close this since I just got into it. And I'm going to have to open up Wireshark here. So what I'm doing is I'm, I have to open up Wireshark as root so I have access to the Ethernet port. I'm going to start a capture here. And I'm going to show you all. Uh, I'm going to type in something that I have. I'm not going to type in Google because it might be cached. All right. So I'm going to type in example.com. I'm going to hit enter. You see that? So basically example.com is a domain. This is a reserve just for testing. Right? So now when I go here, I'm going to stop this capture. So what I just did is just like a DVR. I just captured all the bits on the wire. Just like a DVR. No, this is where it gets. This is where it get this, this. This is where it keeps. Uh, you can't see my. Oh, so you can't see my. All right, cool. You can't see the mouse clicker. All right, cool. My bad. All right. I, I note, note it. Totally note it. So I'm, I'm going to click up here into this filter. In Wireshark, there's these things called filters. Right, and in this filter, what I can do here is I can type in my favorite is one that's called frames contain. So I want to I want to slow down real quick. So a filter is like you being able to. Somebody says, "Where's the act at?" I love I love that's a great question. I'll show you where the act's at. I'll show you a three-way handshake because there's two things that went on here. The first thing that went on is we did a DNS request and because let me show you here. So if I say frame contains example.com up here, I see a standard query. Whoa, is that for my friend? Is that for my, what the heck is all this stuff? I'm surprised all this stuff came up. Oh, hit enter. It might be cached because I think I might have looked at it before. Hold on a second. Let me try something else. Let me try one more time. Let me try to look at some random. Uh, let me try this again. I'm going to try ESPN.com. That's not trying to anything. Alright, 
So I had I I had I got an error going on here uh, that that I, I don't I don't know what happened there. Let me try let me try this one more time. I'm a persistent son of a gun. Oh, I can't do it there. Hold on a second. Gotta start up again. I gotta start wire sharp again. Bear with me. This should this should work. All right. Let me look up uh, NFL.com. All right. So hopefully it's going to look up the NFL site. So the first thing it should do. First thing it should do is it should do a DNS request. So I'm going to try frame contains again. And what, and, 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 so I got all kind of different traffic here. What the heck? All right, there it is right there. I just, it didn't, the dot messed it up. That's probably what I was doing wrong. So right here, the first thing it does is it looks for a, um, it looks for a dang, um, it looks for the domain because it can't, it can't communicate with a domain by itself. It has to have an IP address. So DNS, let's look at this real quick. If you, if you did your homework, you would know that DNS is too hard. All these domains, you have to have an easy way to reconcile the domain to the IP address. This is just like on your cell phone now, you probably have tons of different names on your cell phone. And, and back in the day, you just had to remember somebody's phone number. But now you don't have to. And you know, you got thousands, you know, you could have up to thousands of numbers in your cell phone. Well, DNS is like the phone book. If you type in NFL.com, DNS, that's a DNS server out there. And when you when you when your computer goes out there for DNS, what that does is it's gonna say, hey, it's gonna use UDP and it's gonna say, hey, what's what's that port number? And here's how that looks. So here what's cool about this, everything, a lot of these things are pure text. So here's the request, and then that request, this is like looks weird here, but we're requesting NFL.com, and it, it's going to tell us the IP address. So look look here. So Ethernet frame, this is the source. This is VMware. This is the destination. So the source is my machine, and right here it says response, and hopefully... What happens is, here's the response. It's gonna tell me, hey, go to fastly.net, and that's where NFL. NFL is using this thing called a CDN. It's called a content delivery network, and it's, it's serving up the NFL's content from this IP address. Does that make sense, hopefully? So, uh, now this protocol is definitely in this case is using UDP. Most of the time DNS uses UDP, but sometimes it can does t it can do TCP. That's very rare. I haven't seen a lot. Now, so somebody said they want to see uh, they want to see. Uh, so I'm going to type in something. I think it's HTTP request method. If I type in HTTP request method, I'm doing a lot of stuff that's kind of like somewhat, I guess, you know, a little bit maybe advanced. I'm going to stop. Whoops. Cancel. I'm going to stop this capture. I'm going to do HTTP.request.method. And what that does is it tell it gives me all the initial GET requests. And in here, what we can possibly see is this HTTP is that a git request what in the heck does that say oh my bad here's an example of the git request this is way down here so again look here this how many bits is on the wire 
this is source destination. So every computers are so fast. Every time they're doing this a million times, it's like so fast. Your computer and your ethernet right now when you're looking at this, it's doing this, this switching and changing of traffic. So now what's happening here is this is what a get request looks like. Uh, and um, let me see. So here's where the flags are at. And so I said send. So basically these things are called flags. And you see an act right here. That's an acknowledgement, right? So I think you can probably say tcp.flag dot send equal equals one and that's gonna show me all the send packets where it equals one so you can see all these send packets this is like some of this stuff is like crazy but I mean as far as the commands I'm typing in but I think in a couple of weeks you'll be able to do these these some of these commands I just know this stuff because I've been doing it for a long time I'm up here it says tcb.flags.send equals one right so this right here, what we're doing is kind of, this is kind of advanced, right? But I want you to know that you're going to be able to do this very easily in a, in a, in a little bit. You're going to be a beast. Um, so that one, what that means is there's a one right here. That's a one. That's what that means. So don't worry about being lost. I got you. <laughs> we we have, we have this community on Discord. But if you can do what I'm doing right here, and that's the goal, you do this, you good for a security analyst role. Because I can guarantee you that most things security analysts, they can do this, right? So you're gonna pick up you're gonna pick up the stuff that you need. Plus, you're going to know the certification stuff. So, so basically, I could say, hey, yeah, DNS is this, right? And, I could, and that's all I could say. But now what we're doing is we're going under, under cover here, under the covers here. Like, okay, well, how does that really work? You feel me? That's what I'm trying to show you. So, hopefully this helps. So, <laughs> what we're going to do... <laughs> Um, let's take another break. Somebody said DNS is secure DNS. So DNS stuff that we're doing here, you can actually see, you can see it in plain text. That means it's not encrypted. Uh, so DNS, uh, DNS sec is a more secure version of, of that. And it's actually signing to know that you're going to the real stuff. So basically... I want you to really understand how this stuff goes because a lot of people they get their you know their security plus or they get a network plus and they don't know this stuff. So uh, we're gonna take a break. Uh, we're gonna take a break in a second. I'm wait till five and then we're gonna we're gonna part on five. Any questions, real quick? So I'm going to try to make, I don't know why my mouse is not showing up. I'll try to figure that out, right? I'll try to figure it out, but check this out. You can download Wireshark. I'm going to be talking about Wireshark a lot. So you'll pick up stuff from me. Uh, PCAP is, is the format of uh, the, the files. So if you see PCAP. I'm going to post the recorded sessions on YouTube. You can study Wireshark anytime you want to. The Discord channel. Uh, can we can we can we get the Discord channel uh, for the people who want, want to get in there? Yeah, we went from network passing network to OSI to packet analysis. Yeah, 
So the point, the point why I'm doing this is because I want some of the people, some of the people in here are advanced and some of them are, some of y'all are not advanced, right? So what we're doing here is I'm showing you the end product on what you should be able to do. The schedule is Tuesday and Thursday, right? Do not feel overwhelmed at all. We're, 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 what we're doing is I'm showing you this so you can know what the, the goal is. This is the goal. You're going to be here, right? So don't feel lost. Don't feel overwhelmed. We're going to go over all this stuff. The reason why I'm showing this right now is so you know why it's relevant, right? And that's what today's about because I want people to know, like, even the, some of the more advanced people in here, this they're going to learn stuff from this as well. So when, when we get to the end of this, when we get to the end of eight weeks, you're going to be good. So just just please be patient. Like last week was, was kind of slow for some people. This week is over some people's head. But what we're going to do, this is the goal. Don't don't be scared. <laughs> so hopefully y'all understand this. I'm, I, so I'm telling y'all, I got, I got you, fam. I got y'all, and y'all gonna be beasts. All right. Cause some people look like some people look shook up in here. <laughs> Don't be shook. Uh, yeah, hold on a second here. Let me. Yeah, so. I'm going to hold on a second. Here. Let me, let me, I'm going to post it. I have some, I have a couple of mods in here. I suck at a lot of this tech. I, I, I'm, I'm new, I'm new to Discord and I'm new to this too. But that FZV, that Discord GG, the FZ, that's a legit link. So even if you're brand new, trust me. Don't worry about homework if you're just joining. Don't work the homework's for you. It's not for me. But I will be checking at some point. A salty shrimp bones mom. I'm do not trust anybody <laughs> on here except for me and the mods. This is the internet, and we got people out here that are evil. I don't, it's some people here that you cannot trust. You can trust some people, but you, we absolutely, <laughs> there's absolutely people here that will try to hack your computer 100%. Do not worry about sharing homework. I will give y'all detailed instructions on homework next Tuesday. But do the homework because you need to do it. The homework's for you, not for me. That's right. I need to, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put the homework, I'm, I'm going to put the, the name Twitch thing up on there. All right, let me stop. I asked, I, I, I asked, answered a lot of questions. I'm going to give you all a quick five minute break. I'll be back at 15 after.
Yeah, I'm about ready to get started back up. All right, so let's let's keep on. Um, so this is actually a live capture that I just did. I'm gonna close this live capture. And I'm gonna go back into. I'm gonna go back into Wireshark, and I'm gonna open up that day one log. So one of the reasons why my why network security is hard is because um, there's a lot of traffic, so there's a lot of different things going on all the time. Uh, I just wanna. Pause real quick. Can everybody can everybody hear me? Understand me? All right. So if I click, I'm gonna actually click on stuff and and active. I understand that you can't see the the mouse. I'll try to troubleshoot that. Uh, but I'm gonna actually click on stuff when I'm talking about it now, so you can see it highlighted. All right, so in this in this one right here, what we're seeing the source address, and I'm right now I'm assuming we can we can make a safe assumption that this source address is the machine that's that this this is going to be uh, eventually compromised. I, I would imagine. So in Wireshark, you see source and destination addresses. This is like a phone log where you can see. Or what what you can do on your on your phone is you can see if you made an outbound call or inbound call. So these are these are inbound and outbound uh, communications. We can see here this says domain name system query. That means this is a DNS request. This says response. That means that that's going to contain the the name of what we we queried. It's probably this right here, and an IP address. All right, so bunch of DNS requests. And um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do another, uh, what, what you can consider somewhat of an advanced thing. So basically in, in Wireshark, you can, cap, you can color the packets now there's built-in uh, packets here. There, there's built-in uh, colors, uh, coloring things, um, or you can create your own. Uh, you can actually create your own stuff too. Uh, so you you can go here to coloring rules, and these coloring rules are pretty cool because you can create your own coloring rules here. And I like to do. I like to create my own tolling rules so I can quickly see uh, different traffic. So what I like to do is I like to go in here, and I like to. I'm going to delete all that, and I'm going to add a couple of um, a couple of my own custom rules. Let me try this one more time. I'm gonna because I still need gut. What is it doing? Oh, is it scrolling over? All right, cool. What I like to do here is I like to create my own uh, custom stuff so I can quickly uh, see traffic that I'm interested in. Enter it's a filter. So my, my family are in there debating, do aliens exist? This is funny. Oh, what the frick? You know what? I 
I'm trying to, I was going to try to show you, show you how to color the packets, but, um, what we can do, I, I can't, it's actually acting kind of weird and I, I can probably show you that in another lesson. But what, what's cool about this is what, what we can, we can do here is that, and we can actually go through here and look. And, um, I'm gonna try to, I'm trying to color my packets. Hold on a second. Coloring rolls. Dang, what the frick? All right. Add coloring roll. This is kind of important, so bear with me real quick. So, uh, background, I'm going to color it white, foreground, white. So what I'm going to do here is I want to, I'm, I'm coloring my packets and you'll see it's going to make a lot of sense in a second. Now I'm gonna like what I'm doing is, is is somewhat advanced, but everything is gonna make sense eventually. Uh, you're just gonna have to trust me on it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna color color this one as well. So what, what I'm trying to do is I want to be able to quickly recognize when new communications are happening. It's going to, and it's going to color the, if it's an act by itself, if it's a sin act, it's going to look like that. So let me, let me show you how that looks and hopefully that, that worked. So I'm looking down here and it, what I'm trying to do is I'm, I want to make it quick so I can analyze traffic. So if I go down far enough, I think I have it on now. What I'm gonna do is open, I'm gonna open up the other one, open three. I don't see anything jumping out there. I'm gonna go down here. That should freaking light up. Let me see. Dang, I'm 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 failing epically here because I, I should I should see I think I colored my packets. Ah, oh, fantastic. TCP sin, did I see a sin egg? Well, okay, cool. So now I, I do have coloriz colorization working. Give me a second here, and I, I'm gonna get it right here. So this row right here, TCP egg. Um, I need to change this to sin. TCP equals one. All right. So I'm, I, this is all gonna make sense in two seconds, and then once I get it, once I get it working, it's a nice little method that I like to use uh, to to just hop through. Hopefully. Um, 
So basically, when I see a sin act, that should mean that I'm getting, that's the beginning of a, a, a conversation. So I'm looking, I'm looking, and hopefully, oh, did I see something? All right, here, here's the beginning of a conversation. This says sin act. I wanted to color that thing sin as well, but let's just, what you can do, and in, in, in this hopefully this will make sense in a second here. What I can do here is I can actually start following uh, those, those TCP streams. Start following that traffic. So this 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 says port number twenty two. So that that's uh this is port number twenty two as you probably already know that um uh, oh Ventre I think I think you're right. So let me let me try to go through here. So. You're saying that bear in mind that even though the second color rule also matches sin act for hold on it would not match. I think I, I think I have a day I think I have the, the order wrong. Let me try that again. Trust me, this is like really this is money if I get it right. I I haven't played around with Wireshark in, in a while, so so just bear with me uh real quick. Alright, so right here I thought you could actually Move these jokers up and now. Sin. I, I don't. I can't have sin first. So this should match only if it has a sin sin packet. I've done this dang rules a thousand times. I've done this same thing a thousand times before. Now everything's lit up. And that's not what I want. Synacts. That's not what I want. God dang it. I used to have this nice little method that I used to use. And I don't know what. What the frick. Maybe it's not sin. Hold on a second. Is it act? With one? God dang it, Marcus. This is 22. Alright, let me look at that day one log one more time. If I get this if I get this right, everything is gonna make sense. Hold on a second. Ah perfect. This actually makes sense right here. So what you're seeing here is is you're seeing uh the attacker, this is the attacker actually uh, running a script on this system right here. But let me let me go back to see if I what I can see before that. This is what I, I was trying to I was trying to highlight. So let me let me slow let me slow down a little bit here. So the whole attack is in, in this uh, in this stream of communications. So after that DNS and what I'm doing is I'm paying attention on my right side panel. On my right side panel, there's going to be things that they are lighting up as blue. Um, on the bottom of this panel over here on the right, so I'm just going to use that view to go in here. And what I'm going to do is I can I can I'm going to double click on the first blue one I see, and I'm going to follow this TCP stream. And what this what what's interesting about this is this is this right here is a is a command that's telling me the operating system that that's that's being attacked here. 
this this is a Sun machine. Uh, Sun OS. Sun is a Unix version. Now, why this is important is because when you get root access to the system, sometimes the, the attacker is going to type command line things to kind of see where where they are. Um, and so, again, what we're trying, what we're talking about here is um, I'm going to go back to here. And remember, this is the honeypot. That honeypot is running a Sun OS. Uh, the bad guy is coming from a different IP address, and there's a sniffer that's uh, intercepting this traffic. Uh, the sniffer is probably TCP dump on the Sun machine. So, uh, going back to the going back to the Wireshark capture. Now, uh, on here, um, so that was the first thing we saw. So I'm gonna follow this stream. And if you don't, I'm I don't see anything here, so I can just filter out the stream. And it's gonna take me to the next. It's gonna take me to the next piece, next next packet. So what I'm doing here is I'm focusing on the sin act. We talked about a three-way handshake, and a sin act um, is a part of that three-way handshake. You have a sin packet here, and then you have a sin act that follows right after that. And this is actually confusing because that that I that that filter that I set up earlier should have damn worked because I only see sin right here. But <laughs> I'm determined to get this to work. Hold on a second. Uh, hold on a second. I thought sin by itself should work. Let me try this one more time, people. So that's pack. So packet number I can see over here on the left side. That's packet number five sixty-seven. I'm gonna try this one more time because it's so much easier if I can colorize both these packets. Um, and I'm gonna try to explain everything I did. We have thirty more minutes. The next class is gonna be way way simpler. I'm just trying to show you. I'm just trying to show you why this all matters. All right, so what I want to do is do, is get rid of this one. Uh, I'm going to add, what's this right here? I want to add one, tcp.flags.sin equals one. All right, so hold on a second, new colon rule. All right, so synac and then ag. Okay, let's see what we got. Ah, there we go. Wow, that was freaking too hard. So it's actually showing what, what I wanted to show you before. So I told you that there was sin, synac, and an ag. That's the three way handshake. Now, I'm really happy about this, by the way. <laughs> so, okay. So, we talked about TCP and UDP being connection and connectionless uh, protocols. Why this is important is... Why this is important is because this right here, these two right here, this is the beginning of a communication. And in the networking world, we call this a three-way handshake. So, sin, sin, act, act. Now, that's a three-way handshake. Now, what we can do in this, in this case, we can actually look through and see what the attacker is doing. In this case, this is the first one we saw. I'm going to filter out the stream. And what happens is I filter out that stream. That means I, I got rid of that stream. And I'm looking for the next send, uh, send request. See this send right here? 
there's a reset act right here. That means that the system shunned a reset is like shut this connection down. And sometimes that's how um, that's how firewalls can shun the, the communications as well. But I, I only care about sin and the sin acts because sin sin act that means that was a that's going to be a successful through handshake. You got to act. So let's look at this this packet. Now what I'm showing y'all is I'm showing y'all that this is how communications look on the wire. This is how, this is, the reason why this is important is because this is how systems, th these are how systems on the internet talk. So when you, when you go to a website, most of the time it's going to bring you back text. There's going to be either the HTML or JavaScript. So many of the things that, that happen online are in, indeed uh, communications. So this is communications right here. This is a one-way communication, and this is going from this machine on the internet to this machine. This machine is uh, the machine that's local. Because you see this 61, that's an internet address. A 192 address is local. Just like if you look at your IP address on your local network, you might have a 192 address. And what I'm doing is I'm going to the next piece, what happened after this. All these A's on here, this looks like this could be exploit code. This could be some kind of buffer overflow or something of that nature. I'm going to filter out that stream and I'm going to look, I'm going to see the next sin, sin act, because now I have them color coded. And they're right b beside each other. So now I can tell every time that something happened as far as communications goes. So I'm going to follow and follow this TCP stream. And now this is where this gets super interesting. So after that last thing, I said that looked like a, that could have been a buffer overflow. Sometimes you see, see that kind of stuff. And here you see the, the attacker is in red here. The attacker is doing this long command here. And what this long command uh, is doing, he's doing a lot of, lot of stuff here. Um, and what that does is you, you see that every command he does is rendering out here. So you name dash a command and this is the server sending the information back. He said, the attacker said ls-l core. It says no such file directory. The next one, uh, he, also, he also tried to, it says no, no such file directory. That doesn't exist. Um, and he, he looks for PID, which is an is a, is a ID for, for a process ID. And it gives him a process ID. The attacker says wget. This is in red. wget is a program to download more software. Right? Uh, w, the command. Uh, so the attacker's entering these commands. So wget is not there. wget is used to, do, is, is used to do command line web receipts. You're trying to get something. You're trying to pull down more code. So an attacker, what they'll do is they'll get onto a box and then they'll download more code. So, uh, Austin, I'm looking at every interaction, not just one, by the way. I'm, I'm going down. The reason I, I did, I wanted to look at every interaction. So sometimes when you get, when a box is compromised, you need to look at everything. By the way, so you can just go through. Um, here, bin dot. Uh, all these red commands are the stuff that the attacker is doing. And right here, the attacker in issues a command. He enters the FTP command, and he he specifies a port fifty one, 
And the name, and, and there's a username here that he's using called Bob's. That's the hacker name. And I guess the password is Joka. So the first thing the attacker does is since he knows that W gets not there on this line, W gets not there. So the attacker, he does a get for W get. Then he does a get for this, this thing, DLP. He does a get for this thing. That's get sold BNC. BNC is BNC's, that's a program. And that says, that's the IP version 6 for Sun. So what attackers do, once they get onto the box, once an attacker gets onto the box, what attacker most of the time will do is download more wares, is what they call it, right? So getting, getting, and then the attacker is, is quit. So what the attacker did is the attacker did a buffer overflow where we're at. And now he's down here. He, the attacker downloaded all these different files and he's doing a, a shamad. And what the shamad command does, um, yep, BNC is, a, is balancing, uh, it's RC, but yep, yep, yep. So what, what we have here is the attacker is doing a shamad and he's making all those commands executable. The attacker is, is, issues the wget command and now the wget command does work. It's just telling them, it gives him a standard error saying, hey, you need to tell me what to do. So the attacker does a wget and says, I want this saw.tar.gz. Now, what happens is, that's a tar.gz is a zip file, what we call tarball, T-A-R-B-A-L-L, -L, tarball, and it's zipped. So he's downloading this. So what attackers do is they have different, they have, they have their, their, their software is hosted on a different box. I attack this box. Now I want to download. The first thing he did was FTP. Then the second thing that they're doing, that the attacker is doing, is he has a web server somewhere. And many times these boxes are other compromised machines that the attacker had. But let's get back what we what we said earlier. I also said, at some point, the attacker must have did reconnaissance. He did a buffer overflow. Now what the attacker is doing is the attacker is doing persistence and abuse. So let's let's go back to the wire chart. Have well, I got two wire charts open? I might do. God dang it. I think I think I I think I nuked it. So um so basically um let me I'm gonna pause real quick uh and I'll take I'll take some questions. I'm gonna find my place too. So I'm looking at the questions. So somebody said most of the commands used uh, by hackers are the, are the same as a regular Unix thing. Yeah, so I tell people that hackers are are, are just like system administrators, except they have malicious uh, intent. I'm just walking down to trying to find where I was at before. That's the buffer overflow. Yeah, the PCAP, I'll, I'll make sure everybody get access to the PCAP. Oh yeah, these sort of vulnerabilities are common. But, but, well, back in the day, buffer overflows were all over the place. But hey, there's even uh, buffer overflows in Windows uh, sometimes. So 100%, uh, yeah, this happens all the time.
Yeah, so above road flow, typically what, what happens? Typically what happens in above road flow, you send the, you, you're sending the uh, computer uh, so much information uh, that that uh, it's it's a it's like a it's like almost like a water bottle, right? You fill a water bottle up too much because they didn't put proper checks on it, and then you get it to a state where you can issue your own commands. That's essentially what a buffer overflow is. I'm gonna try to walk through walk to where I was at. All right, so this is where I was at. And so eventually uh, the the attacker uh, runs a com command down here called setup. And then it says IRC uh, author Bob's. So Bob, Bob's has a IRC. Uh, he, 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 uh, he's going to turn this machine to IRC server. So, also, what Bob does is Bob, like many attackers, down here, Bob, so let me, let me, all right, so up here, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to go slow. This is the, when he, the, Bob entered setup, and so that started the IRC server. Here, uh, it says delete logs, so Bob ran a script to delete logs. The hacker. So the hacker is what hackers do many times is they'll delete the logs. So that's what what he's doing here. He he got he got the attacker got on the box and now the attacker is deleting the logs. And now uh, insert rootkit. He's installing the rootkit. We talked about persistence, right? And that's what that is. RC is Internet Relay Chat. Uh, it's kind of like Discord before Discord. And this is actually super interesting right here. So what the attacker does here is pretty dope because the attacker, the attacker does an FTP to get a patch to patch the system. So now what the attacker is doing. Uh, and by the way, if you if you if you get in here uh, and download, um, you can actually extract these extract these binaries from here. So don't don't you know don't be careful when you you're you're playing around with this stuff. Uh, some of the binaries uh, could be harmful if you're ever doing this kind of stuff. So now what the attacker is doing, the attacker has has a foothold on the system. So now what the attacker is doing, and notice these ports too, this is FTP. So we suspect to see FTP traffic, right? And what this guy is doing right now is he's gonna download the patch from Sun. The attacker is downloading the patch so he can patch the system so some other attacker can't come behind him and, and have this machine. Well, this is pretty cool. Yeah, I can show people how to carve out files. I, I, I like doing that. So, so now the attacker, he's, he's FTPing, he's downloading uh, these things directly from Sun. Uh, that's, that's this traffic right here. And he's going to patch these things eventually as well. He's installing this stuff. This is actually funny. I, I tell people um, in many cases, and this is this is start BNC. He issued that command. CD to this. Boom. And every time he does something, this is funny. You're going to see this a repetition. Delete logs. Deleting all the logs again. Hiding the evidence again. Uh, 
I'm filled out the stream. Now what we see here, I see port 23. So typically that port 23 is telnet, but we see a reset act here. So this is how you're going to be able to go through traffic and see all kinds of different things like this. So that says reset act. So that means that some scanning is going on too. Simultaneously here, and that could be another attacker. People are scanning the internet all the time for stuff. Follow TCP stream. So this is more traffic. This is the BNC traffic running. I mean the BR BNC server. Uh, set username, creating users and stuff on here. Now what we see here, what, what port it, so basically that looks like that's on 7,000. I'm going to filter out the stream. And you can learn a lot by by um, by going through this, and this is how it works. But notice, all the things that we talked about before are one hundred percent. So six six seven, that's that port right there is is a is a uh, IRC port. I'm gonna filter the stream out. I mean, this stuff to me is, is fascinating, uh, just going through, and that's why honeypots are pretty popular, uh, because then you can you can see what uh, people are doing uh, on on these different things, like this. And I just I just love watching kind of like what attackers do. Fills out the stream. And just keeping on, keeping on, keeping on going down here, and these are the kind of things that, that the attackers do. But but um, if you a, a couple of other things we I talked about earlier, right? Um, is just is being able to just go through uh, on these filters. You can type in TCP port. Equals equals, and I want to say twenty one. And and we know that there should have been FTP traffic. So you look right here, and you see FTP source twenty one right here. What you can do here is you can right click on this and follow these streams as well. And you can see right here that there's that's an FTP session right there as well, right. Um, and you could keep on going uh, and find out all the FTP stuff that went on. So if you're doing forensics, and this may happen at some point, uh, you can see where the, this is the command to retrieve that zip document from Sun. You can see this is SunSolve Online. That's Sun's FTP server back in the day. Um, you can also, what we can do is we can say um, HTTP dot request method. And we can see all the HTTP requests. So right here, it says get this tar, follow this TCP stream. Here's a get request. That, that was wget. See the user agent right here, and here is that tarball. This is the file that it sent. So one of the goals that I that I have, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna back out of this. Now, what this is this is important because I believe in the next, you know. Eight weeks. I think all y'all could could do this and know exactly what you're doing, and that's my goal. So, 
but everything's relevant. Now let's just go through here. We saw DNS being used right there. We saw SSH being used right there. We saw a Telnet attempt trying to be, be used there. We saw HTTP being done. That was the WGET. Um, we saw TCP being used there. We saw UDP being used there. We saw IP, we saw ICMP. I didn't call it out, but that's pinging, right? We saw bits on the wire. We saw MAC addresses in use. We saw IP addresses in use on the network layer. We saw IP, we saw dang transport layer, we saw, we saw TCP and we saw UDP. We saw, we, we saw a little bit of the presentation layer but I would be, be consistent. The presentation layer that we saw is we saw a lot of text. And also from application perspective, we saw all these different things being used. So big picture, <laughs> no session layer, right? Big picture here is that, that this is the process that I want to help y'all out with. I want, you know, we're going to go through these concepts. We're going to go through the concepts, but I, you're going to be doing labs, uh, you know, so I would, I would highly recommend that you try to download Wireshark, um, you know, over the next couple of days. Hopefully you can have that running uh, because what I want to do is I want to get you to be able to do that as well, right? Because... In a SOC, in a security operations center, you, you might have an opportunity to do binary analysis like this. Or the tools, there's automated tools that do this same thing. And when, when you see the output from those, uh, those automated tools, you're going to 100% know how this got there. I'm trying to remove the magic. If, if you feel me, so um, hopefully, hopefully th this makes. So what I want y'all to do, uh, this this week, I want you to do these definitions, one dot three, and one dot four, and we'll we'll talk about that uh, next uh, on on tu on Tuesday. So homework, your homework is one dot three and one dot four. Don't worry about emailing me uh, this. Like I said, we got like 500, 600 people now. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I don't, I'm, I'm terrible with email anyway. So 1.3 and 1.4 definitions. And then what I like to do, again, drilling these concepts home, drilling the concepts home. We talked about this today and we saw it in real life. Um, that's what's super important. Um, and so I said eight weeks, but uh, hopefully I want to do it as much as, uh, as much as we can. Uh, you know, I'm, it might take longer than eight weeks to get you where I want y'all to get. So, um, I'm in this to get y'all good. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so, hey, when we, when we finish, there might be. You know, if there's 50 people at the end of this, if there's 100, if there's 200, I'm good, right? So I'm 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 good. So I can guarantee you, if y'all stick with me, y'all gonna y'all gonna y'all gonna be able to get busy. So, uh, yeah. So that's that's pretty much it for tonight. So the the homework is one 1.3 to 1.4, and I will be checking. Uh, so a little bit of uh, so basically one more thing is uh, we're partnered with mental health hackers. I want you to check them out. So men mental health hackers uh, is going to be helping uh, with the security plus test. Um, we have people donating. So they're not going to don donate the money to mental health hackers and the mental health hackers is going to pay for some tests. So hopefully y'all Hopefully this was okay tonight. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'll be take I'll take your feedback. Uh, y'all can y'all can ask me questions right now before we go. Yep, it'll be on Twitch and YouTube. I downloaded both things uh, last night. Hey, don't worry. Stick with me. It, even if it was confusing, stick with me. Um, actually, I don't have... I, I ran out of... Oh, I do have some Vino. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to create a channel and all that stuff. I actually have a big idea that's crazy. I got a big idea, and I'm, I'm going to... Hopefully, people here can help me out with it. I got a big idea. So, a big idea... Um, being that um, I think we're gonna we're gonna do something cool. I want this the off the offspring of this y'all working with me. Uh, y'all gonna help me. Y'all gonna help in any in, in, you're gonna help big time. Any book recommendations? Uh, I would say just do the homework. Uh, you know, go go whatever resources you have. There's tons of resources in the uh, in Discord. By the way, Discord is is off the chain. It's great. All right, uh, Tribe of Hackers. Yep, that's 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 my book. Um, so I'm gonna hop over to the Discord right now. Hopefully, y'all enjoy it tonight. I'm over it. I'm over. Gonna be over in Discord right now. <laughs>